Okay, this screencast will about how to use setups and how they work. So the already created setups are located in this folder here. There are also sample setups. If you you have to check that the DroidR project is not a library. So go to the preferences and Android and see that this is not checked here. And then you can run the DroidR project as a normal application. Um, yeah, and then this um, this activity would be launched as a main activity, and there you can try all the easy demo setups. This this whole thing is also uploaded in the um, here under the download section as a default um, Droid R APK. So let's create a new um, yeah setup, and yeah, for example, we could already added here as our setup let's call it uh, new setup not the best name i know okay let's create this class it will extend setup and um, yeah here we go so all these methods have to be implemented to to display the virtual world correctly so um, yeah, this is not very important, this method here. It's just if you need to initialize some variables, um, you should do it in here. And um, you could additionally um, do stuff in the constructor. But this method here will be called um, before the, um, the setup is called in the um, initialize process. So this will be directly called when this line of code will be executed, of course, because it's a constructor, and this will be called um, when the setup is used. So you can decide uh, whether to write your initialized code here or here. Um, yeah, the next one is much more important. Here the renderer is passed as a parameter, and you have to add um, all the stuff you want to render um, to your renderer, so um, normally this will be just a world. A world is a basic object um, which where you can add all the the um, yeah stuff um, to to um, create a world. You have to pass a camera because every world has its own um, virtual camera, which then will be moved around. So let's uh, create this here. Let's create this as a field because we will need it later. And let's initialize it. New GL camera, just do it like this. You could also pass an um, initial um, camera position here, but I think it's fine like this. Um, yeah, then we can add the world we just created to the renderer. So add renderer element, and here we have to pass a renderer element so um, we add the world we could also um, add you can create your own renderer elements it would look like uh, like this here there's just this draw method which will then be called every time uh, every um, cycle when something is rendered and you can use the gl stuff to just render things normally here as known from OpenGL. So um, yeah, now we added um, a world, a GL camera, and maybe we should make the world also a field. And um, yeah, then we can add stuff to the world. Okay, maybe I'll do this later here. Just um, add some we can use here, we can use the object factory. I also already passed it as a parameter. So um, we could create some, I already created some example new solar system. I already showed it in another screencast. Um, new back. I can show you how this solar system looks like. It will just be a simple object and to this object then all these um, mesh elements will be added um, here 
Z component there, the, the outer mesh component will be added. And in this outer mesh component, there will be all the, the stars and stuff like this. And yeah, the same way we could add any other thing. So um, just create some objects here and, and add them to the world. And yeah, that's how you render stuff. So um, now we have um, the, the render stuff done. The next thing is how to um, yeah, control things. For example, you have to um, you have to add um, some control mechanisms to control the virtual camera. I will show this by using uh, something else. It's called the default IR setup. I will just go in there and um, here I already did so stuff. So I created a, um, a virtual world and um, here I, I add the, the world to the renderer and uh, I create a, a GL camera and then in the, the part where I have to set the actions to the events I um, use the past event manager and register a new action and um, this action here um, this will rotate um, the camera according to the um, SLO meter and the magnetometer of the device and the other one here will be used um, by um, yeah, using the, the GPS data and stuff like this, the location of the, the device and um, position the, the virtual camera according to this location and um, yeah, again check the, the um, the parameters and the Java doc and it should be explained and just play around a little bit and for you can for, for now you can use the default RF stuff and let's copy this one to our um, to our method here and yeah we called it geo camera this time so let's rename this so um, now we set all the actions, so our camera will be rotated correctly and it will be moved correctly. And um, oh, this one is um, if we want to uh, use um, the touch screen to move the camera. Um, yeah, additionally, you can see it's uh, the same. Um, yeah, the same action as uh, for the trackball action, and uh, it would be the same action to add. Um, can show all the other actions. The location changed action would be the same stuff, so we could again copy this here and um, it will automatically move our uh, camera. Yeah, right, I just realized that I told something wrong in the, the, the default IR setup. Um, this of course will use the trackball and this will use the GPS location and this will use the touchscreen and it's all the same you could um, pass always the same objects and you don't wouldn't need to create uh, three different objects okay yeah that's for the the action event manager stuff system I will maybe I should create an additional small screencast to explain this more detailly because um, yeah, it's important to understand the action system and how you create your own actions and uh, progress them and uh, process them. And let's go to the next step here, the um, add elements to update thread. Here you have to add your um, world to the updater. So add object to update cycle and here we add the world and then um, I can show again how these update elements look like. New updatable. And this will just have one simple method, the update method. And this will be called uh, from time to time every 20 milliseconds. And um, yeah, this way the, all the objects in the world will be animated. And um, yeah, that's how you you do animations and stuff like this and then if you add some world uh, some objects in the world then these for example the solar system will rotate because it has an uh, rotate animation and yeah that's that's the stuff you have to do in here 
and the last one is um, you can use uh, this method I called it e, um, e2 because there's also an e1 method this you can use this one here if you want to create your your own overlay then you would just add uh, it in this frame layout so um, just remove this one here and would, yeah, would have to write overlay view uh, at view I think it's called and then you can create your own yeah, Android overlay above the camera and the OpenGL view there you would uh, create another view just by writing this stuff but you can also if you don't need all that complicated stuff you can also use this one here and use the UI setup and there you could you have some uh, already implemented methods like add button to bottom view and um, yeah, just just check out what you can do with all the stuff um, are already implemented a lot of um, standard UI features and maybe it's enough for you otherwise you should use the E1 method um, yeah another important thing you should know is the add info screen method you can display a small uh, yeah, info screen to the user when starting the RR activity um, by just adding some information add text or a text with icon and then this this information will be displayed um, yeah, in a nice way to the user um, when he launches the, the um, RR activity and yeah I use this a lot to display some information how to for example how to um, calibrate the compass and stuff like this and um, yeah that I think it's really useful and if you don't need it just don't implement it and then it won't be shown um, yeah that's basically it how to um, use this setups okay um, yeah let's go into the setup and I will shortly show you how this stuff all works we have these different setup steps and they will be all executed automatically when you start a setup and in here you yeah, the, the setup will call your methods and um, thereby um, yeah, use your custom setup and uh, yeah, for example this one here and, and here and here are all the methods you just implemented and um, yeah the rest um, you should leave it just like it is it, it works uh, this way and it's uh, um, yeah sort of um, complicated let's say it like this um, I think that's the most important part um, uh, about how to use setups and um, I recommend you to just um, check out how all the setups um, work just um, yeah, take a look at all the stuff in here a lot of them are really short so for example the collect item setup where you walk around and collect the big rotating red arrow there again I create a camera a world and um, the arrow and um, then um, some some logic uh, yeah I create the, the mesh for the arrow and um, what should happen if I'm close enough to the arrow then it should be collected and the catch counter should be increased and stuff like this and uh, add it to the world and um, then I add the world to the renderer and um, I initialize the, the actions again and um, yeah the, the update stuff and uh, some information to be displayed to the user at the beginning yeah um, I think that's it and my time is nearly over only 50 minutes so um, yeah that's it um, if you have more questions just post it to the issues part uh, just create a new issue here and uh, ask what you want to know thanks for watching